So today I'm going to be talking about I'm going to be talking about this basic chuck design that I made um, in Fusion 360. This was basically modeled after a lathe chuck mechanism, where there is uh, I'll just hide this where there's a scroll gear or plate that then um, moves these jaws in and out. And uh, in my case, I had this knob on the bottom. Normally, in a, in a lathe chuck, you would have uh, another another gear um, interacting with the scroll plate and um, an area for the key to come in so you can tighten it down. Uh, but in this case, I just wanted to do a knob, keep things simple, just so I could experiment with the motion and um, practice my CAD skills, basically, and also learn about these joints and motion links that you can see here being animated on screen. So this is um, joints and motion links are how you allow or um, describe interactions between components in Fusion 360. So you can actually see how they move together, how your design is going to um, behave in the real world a little bit better before you, you know, print it or, or manufacture it, let's say. So I'm just going to talk about the design a little bit first. So you can see there are these three jaws that are in black, and then these three sections that um, I'm calling the guides. So you can see they have a bit of a, a slot in them where the jaws slide in and out. That's just to keep the jaws from coming up and down, basically, and just kind of give them a, a path and a guide to travel along. I'll hide that, and you can see the scroll wheel or plate. If I just do this, maybe a little more. Yeah, it's a little easier to see. Um, so this is the scroll plate, scroll gear. Uh, it's basically just a spiral. I used the spiral tool and then, or the coil tool, and flattened it out. Uh, yeah, so I used a coil, and then uh, just flattened it out onto the surface, made it square. And that's how I did that. And then for the jaws, the jaws are these pieces, and I basically just um, then positioned them where they needed to be and cut away that uh, part of the scroll gear so that they would fit together. Um, this bottom part here is just a plate that's just for basically mounting and securing these guide pieces. And the bottom part here is the knob piece for um, turning the jaws and tightening things down or loosening them. So what I'm going to do since it might be helpful to someone, because I know uh, it was a bit tricky for me, was I'm, I'm going to kind of briefly walk through um, the joints in Fusion 360 and the motion links and how that was achieved. So I have this copy of the file over here, which is basically the exact same thing. It just doesn't have the motion links. You can see that uh, it's not doing anything really. And so I'm just going to talk about that. So the, the way joints work in Fusion 360 is there's two types. There's a joint where Basically, the parts are separate. You can read the description there. Components relative to one another defines relative motion. Um, and there's an as-built joint. In my case, I'm going to be using as-built joints, which is basically the same thing as a joint, but you're telling Fusion 360 that the uh, bodies or the components are already in the position you want them to be, and you just want to describe the motion now or the, the, the way they interact with one another. So we'll just do that. We'll do the capture position. And you can see here that you get this little menu. And there's a few different types of joints here. So these all just describe different forms of motion. So rigid is basically rigid, doesn't move, it's not going anywhere, it's static. Uh, removes all degrees of freedom, you can see there, it locks it up. Revolute is rotating around one um, axis. Slider is linear motion along one axis, and then the rest are just uh, variations of that, more axes, rotate and slide, etc. So what I'm only gonna be using is um, Revolute slider in my case. Um, and so the way you can think about this is when you look at your design, um, try to picture how everything's moving. So when I think about this, I know for sure the knob is going to be spinning, right? Because that's what's going to move the uh, scroll gear in the middle. So that's going to have to have a revolute joint. Uh, the scroll gear is also going to be spinning. So that's probably also going to have a revolute joint. And the jaws are going to be moving in and out. So that's only linear. So that's going to be a slider basically and then we just kind of have to link all those motions together and now I'm, of course I'm not an expert so there may be some things I'm missing here or um, not describing correctly but maybe it helps somebody and I can at least just tell you what I went through so let's start with revolute joint on the scroll gear here so I'm going to describe a as-built revolute joint. You have to select two components. So since I know this plate is going to be stationary, I'm just going to use that as the secondary. 
and then you select the snap point. In my case, I'm just going to select the center here, basically, of the scroll plate. And yeah, you saw the little animation, so it's spinning there. It might be a bit hard to see with the uh, black appearance, but yeah. So that means it's spinning, and great. It's spinning around the right axis, everything's good, no problems. So we can just say that that's done. And next, what I will do is I'll start working on the jaws. So I only really want the slider to be moving. So in my case, I'm, I'm just going to select the plate again. Again, I'm not sure. Maybe this isn't the best way of doing it, but uh, it seems to work. So I'm going to do that, and that tells me, and then I get the snap point. So I'll just do the middle of the back there. So you can see it's working totally fine. And I know this plate's not going to be moving anywhere, so it's not going to then affect the motion of that or anything like that because it's like it's not like they're linked and the plate's stationary. So we know everything's good. And I can just go that continue. And then what I'm going to do is go over here to the drop down the browser menu here and I can do edit joint limits. So this allows me to specify how much travel I want to give it. In my case, it's going to be a minimum of zero because uh, which represents the position it's in and then 14 away, 14 millimeters away. So if we animate that now, you can see it just does that range of motion from zero to 14 millimeters. And so that's it. Now you can drag it and, and slide it around, but it's not interacting with anything else. So what's next is, well, I'll just go ahead and quickly do the other ones quickly. Just get that done too. Do that. As build joint here, here. Select a snap point on this guy there. And then we'll do the limits. Uh, oops, I already did that one. Hit joint limits. 14 millimeters. And the, fourth, the value of 14 millimeters is just something I kind of determined by kind of eyeballing it. How far out do I want it to go before these uh, the, jaw, the jaws would kind of slide out or fall out. So 14 seemed pretty reasonable. See, that kind of gets it to the end of the teeth there. Um, so that's good. So now we've got all of those in there. And what I will do is add a motion link. So defines rotational and translational relationship between joints, joint degrees of freedom. So this, you are selecting the joints and telling Fusion 360 that these joints are going to um, interact with one another. So what I'm gonna do is, unfortunately I do this a few times, but what I'm gonna do is to do, oh, I already have two selected, okay. Revolute, and I'll take this slider here. And it's going to be four millimeters. Um, this might have already been populated from when I was playing around with this before. Uh, but yeah, you just have to, you're going to have to figure out um, how much you want things to move based on the uh, movement of the other part, right? So 360 degrees corresponds to four millimeters, I guess. Um, so that's what it's showing. And in this case, you can see. Um, something's wrong there. It doesn't look right, and that's because it needs to be reversed. So now you can kind of see that they're lining up properly. So that I just just kind of guess and check work there. Um, that's why it's really handy to have these animations and know how things are interacting with one another. So let's do another motion link between the revolute joint and this guy. Same thing, reverse. You can see now they're doing it together. And one more here. Reverse. There we go. And next up, so what do we have now? So these parts are interacting with one another. It looks good, it's smooth and everything. So now we need this knob to also be turning. So that's also going to be an as-built joint. And I'm gonna select the plate again. Revolute, we'll set the snap there at the center of the thing the knob so that's spinning fantastic and now I want a motion link between this and this so that this is going to drive the rotation of that and that should be good animate no it doesn't want to animate okay let's just see what happens when I do it so yeah it seems to be turning the wrong way, right? So this is turning uh, clockwise, 
when I'm turning this counterclockwise. So all we have to do then is go back in here, edit, reverse. So now they should turn together, yeah. So you can see this while you're turning, because I defined those joint limits, right? It locks, it doesn't go past this because that's where the boundary of uh, those slider joints comes into play. So I can't go past that. And if I go the other direction and I'm loosening this, the jaw, it's a little tricky at this angle, but if I go like this, oops, if I go like this, maybe, yeah. And I go around, you can see it'll get out to the end, nice and slow, and then boom, I can't go any more air locks. So this gives you a really good idea of how it's gonna interact uh, all the parts and how, what the motion looks like and just how it's gonna be in the real world before you even bring it to the real world. So that is how that works. And next up, I will show you the 3D printed version of this. Here is the final Chuck print. You can see it in all of its mediocre glory. Um, it, uh, I got the red knob. I used different filaments here just to make it look nicer. Um, also, please excuse my uh, shoddy camera work here. I'm sure there's going to be some shaky cam and things like that. Um, it does work pretty well. You can see, if I hold it in front of the camera, you can see that the jaws go in and out. As intended, there is some friction. Sometimes the jaws get caught. That could be a clearance issue and also just uh, there might be some stringing that I forgot didn't fully remove on the bottom of the, uh, the jaws where they mesh together with this roll plate. The guide rails here are uh, connected with just two um, M4 screws to that, that ring, that plate. And uh, each one of them has two screws. There's one M4 screw, maybe you can see it. And a lock washer that just goes through the uh, scroll gear and into the knob that just clamps the scroll gear down, connects to the knob so that they can turn and they don't come, uh, I don't start unthreading the screw too easily. That's what the lock washer's there for, so that works well enough, I guess. Um, and it spins, it's pretty good. Clamps in and out, you can see here is a pen, which is size comparison. Um, doesn't really do much, of course, it's more basically just a paperweight or a, you could use it as a pen holder for your desk or something, right? But uh, at least it works, and you can see we got we achieved that motion that we sort of simulated in Fusion 360 using those joints. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, thanks for watching.